My guest today is the lead singer of the band Act of Defiance, and he just released his first solo album name, The Devil Is My Friend. Please welcome Henry Derek Ellis. Hi, Henry. How are you? Hello, man. I'm good. How are you? Great talking to you again. It's always a pleasure for me uh, to talk with you, Henry. Uh, yes, I'm fine. So, at first, I want to know, uh, when and why did you decide to realize your solo project? Um, well, really, I think I just had time to do it. You know, it's something I've been contemplating over the past decade or so. Um, and I had like a year off, pretty much. Um, I took a year and a half to make the album. And, you know, I did a few tours and made a record um, with Act of Defiance. But, you know, I, I think really I just had the extra time and I was really motivated, like, really, you know, to be creative and kind of get in the studio and be hands-on in a way that I haven't been with any record. And, you know, I considered putting something out under a different moniker or a different name. In, in some other form, I didn't really know um, that it was going to be a solo record, but that's what it turned out to be. So there you have it. What about this solo project, Make It Personal, about yourself? Um, well, all the songs are pretty personal in terms of... Um, You know, the subject matter lyrically, um, it's a pretty, pretty personal content, I would say. A lot of dark stuff on, on the, the solo record. And, um, seeing as we recorded like 15 songs and, um, you know, I, I, I try not to make everything kind of too personal, you know, but, but I don't know. It's, it's just, uh, it's one of those things where, I felt like I had to I had to break up the monotony and I recorded a bunch of different types of songs but you know the songs on the record just ended up being the more personal um you know I coming from the south the southeast growing up in Georgia um you know that 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 had a like profound effect on me in in terms Well, definitely in my adult years and in my songwriting, I wanted to kind of pay homage to a lot of the roots and a lot of the influences uh, from that region. Um, but, you know, also I I ended up dedicating the record to my parents, um, passed away, and, you know, there's, there's definitely a lot of personal um, things there as well. But, you know, I, I think it's something that the listener can kind of Um, you know, make their own assumption. All right. I'm curious about uh, the next one. Why did you decide to call the album The Devil Is My Friend? Um, well, the title track The Devil Is My Friend is a murder ballad. And um, I've always loved, you know, like old traditional folk songs and old country songs. It's not something you hear very often, but um, it's something that I think is missing in the you know, current, like I don't know, modern music, I would say. Um, and really, like, it's, it's kind of based, lyrically, it's kind of based on, on kind of a loner, uh, uh, almost um, vagabond kind of character who goes around Um, making his own rules and perhaps killing women. I don't know. It, maybe, maybe in some way it was influenced by like serial killers or, you know, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I, I can definitely say that I, I probably watched, uh, the movie Henry Por Portrait of a Serial Killer one too many times and, uh, But I, I think I think ultimately I just wanted to write a song that was um, kind of based around a character like that. But also, you know, it has a little bit of me in there too, uh, especially when it comes to the the uh, the anti-religious aspect. You know, um, so being from the South, which they call the Bible Belt, I think that's where a lot of those references came from. It's a form of provocation. Yes. I read that you were raised by uh, your grandmother and that uh, when you were young, you grew up next to the Central State Hospital, an hospital on snow as the largest psychiatric facility in the world. How did this life experience change your vision of the world 
in which we live? Um, well, it was a pretty horrific experience overall growing up in that environment. Um, you know, you, can't, you don't quite understand it at an early age, but I think it helped shape my um, personality for sure, you know, and especially in terms of having sympathy and empathy for people and really, you know, being more considerate of of others, especially, you know, when it comes to addiction and mental illness and things of that nature. And these are these are things that people are very sensitive about, and I feel like people don't like talking about them. It makes them very uncomfortable. But for me, you know, it, I'm quite comfortable talking about those things. Uh, growing up in that environment, I think that's that's probably how it. That's probably in that way it affected me the most. I would say. <laughs> okay. For a person who have listened to the album, I think we can say that this album sounds like a thought, a southern a gothic with tragic theme. Uh, can you explain why you decide to produce an album following this style of song and lyrics? Because for everybody that know your song with Act of Defiance or uh, with uh, Scar the March here, it sounds so different. Yeah, well, it has nothing in common with, with anything else that I've done. Uh, really, I mean, comparing it to any of the rock or metal bands that I've been in, that would be a complete, that would be a disservice completely, you know. So I, I, I would not, uh, I would definitely say, you know, the listener would have to have an open mind, but at the same time, you know, it's, I, I think, I think a lot of rock and metal fans are pretty open to different types of music. I think a lot of people are coming around in a way that they're, Maybe they're looking for different sounds and they're looking to get into different types of music and you know what I mean? So, uh, I would say, I would definitely also kind of encourage people just to give it a listen to, to make, um, you know, kind of make up their, their minds from that point. I mean, it's, um, like I said earlier, it's, it's some pretty dark stuff on the album overall. So I think it would appeal to a lot of rock and metal fans, but. Uh, again, I would not compare it to anything else I've done. Um, it's uh, it has nothing to do with that, you know. It's it's again, it's it's something that I wanted to take on uh, in a completely different shape, in a completely different light. You know, I wanted it to be um, a completely different extension of my personality. You know, and I think that's important to acknowledge. You know, I think that everybody has different aspects of their personality that they don't always showcase, but maybe you'd like to. And musically, for me, it was like, you know, uh, a different, uh, completely different canvas, you know. Instead of painting the same thing time after time, you know, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to to create different, you know, um, a different world, a different landscape sonically. So, um, again, you know, I, I don't... I don't think that it's it's going to um, make any huge waves in in any like um, any specific subgenre, you know, it's it's kind of like hard to pin down. It's a tough sell, you know. You can call it folk, you can call it country, you can call it art rock or whatever you want, but at the end of the day, I think that you know, the most important thing is that it's good. People are only people really only care if You know, if it's good or not, whether or not they like it. But the problem nowadays is that you have to sell it. You know, every everybody has to, you know, you you have to have a product. You have to be a brand, and you have to make it marketable. Yes. So I think I think when that happens, sometimes, you know, you can lose the artistry in that. You you can lose the magic and the, and the spark that that made you want to create in the first place. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, for the next one, Henry, if somebody could only listen to one song of your solo project to understand your art, which one would you have the person listen to? Um, that's kind of a tough question. Maybe, um, maybe a, a track off the the new record, a track called Mom. Maybe that one, M O M. It's um, it's a, it's a song I wrote a long time ago. And I kind of uh, pieced it together in the studio. It's it. I, I remember when I recorded like a rough demo of it, and I just kind of I recorded it, and I forgot about it, 
And then when it came time to make this record, I, you know, it, I remembered every word and every, like, just without writing it down, it was like a, it was like a dream. It was like a bad dream. And I think that song is like, it's, I don't know. It, it kind of encapsulates, uh, like the blue, like the dark folk element with the, you know, kind of has the bluesy tone to it, but it's really dark too. It goes, it goes, you can go down the rabbit hole with that song. And I think it goes to some pretty dark places. You know, there's, there's definitely a lot of like acoustic guitars kind of interwoven, um, throughout the bridge part, which, um, it's almost like, a yeah, I don't know. It's 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 an interesting song. So I think if anyone were to really be curious as to how my brain works, uh, you know, check out that track. Do you plan uh, to do a second album on your solo project, or one is enough? <laughs> uh, no, I can. I I plan to uh, to do a second record, and and uh, you know I. Quite honestly, I, I hope that I can uh, continue making uh, my own music like this. Um, I would like to. Um, but, you know, of course, that would require really just finding a label that believes in what I do. Um, like I said earlier, this, this, this type of music isn't exactly hugely popular. It, it is in, amongst, you know, a small demographic of people, but, you know, it, it it's really kind of just as underground as a lot of metal music is, you know what I mean? You just have to f kind of find the right audience. So I think in order for me to continue making albums like this, um, I'll have to do that, you know, and that, that really just takes time. So with this answer, uh, what's happening with you and the band act of the science? Um, uh, well, you know, we're, we're definitely taking like a, a small break after all the shows that we did in Europe and we did some, some shows with Armored Saint here in the state and the states as well. And, you know, that was, that was really fun. It was successful for us, you know, got to get our name out there a little more and, you know, uh, capitalize upon the, uh, the, the second record, Old Scars, New Wounds. And, you know, the plan is to get back out there after the new year and, uh, just keep doing it, you know? All right. So just to close, can we expect to air your solo project here in Quebec City or Montreal? I hope so, man. I, I'm trying to, I'm kind of in the process of trying to uh, figure it out right now and uh, just want to find like a decent booking agent, somebody that wants to kind of help me out. And, um, you know, like if it makes sense, um, if the routing makes sense and I can make it work financially, I would love to. And you know what? If not this record, then most definitely the second solo album. I can guarantee you. Hope to see you play in Quebec City or Montreal. Uh, so I have to say uh, once again, thanks for your time. Uh, thanks uh, for all that you can do for the music fan. And so congrats uh, for uh, to realize this album. I know it, it was uh, very personal for you to realize this album. Of course, man. Thank you so much. And I appreciate your support and your time as well. Henry, thanks again. Goodbye. Okay, man. Cheers.